making black pudding. Growing up in our household, every year we would always be making batches of black pudding and white pudding. And to be involved at a very young age in the making of it and the processes involved was pretty special. Yes, growing up I was also either watching my mother or my grandmother baking. But when it came to the black pudding, it was something to behold. Assisting in, in the, the mixing and the holding of the, the, the pudding skins itself. So we're going to go down memory lane today with, from memory, what I can remember and make these black puddings. It is so simple. The ingredients I have in front of me are, first of all, we've got this lovely suet. Okay. Now, perhaps not for the faint hearted. Now the suet is found around the loin or the kidneys or the sheep. So that's our fat content there. I've got a kilo of suet. I've got four medium onions, which are just grated. That's how Gran used to do it. Remember Gran with the grater. So we've got, it's not fine. There's different levels of coarseness in there, which gives it more of a rustic feel to it. One kilo of oatmeal, fine oatmeal. Now the big debate, the seasoning. I know there's many versions of black pudding out there and everyone's got their own favorite from whichever butcher around the whole island. Simple seasonings of one tablespoon of salt, a third of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one and a half teaspoons of mixed herbs, a good teaspoon of black pepper and a third of a teaspoon of nutmeg. That is our simple seasonings. You think maybe the black pudding, the cayenne, it is going to offer two types of heat. It's going to uh, give us that heat from the cayenne pepper and a wee bit of spiciness from both the pepper and cayenne, but not overpowering. Now, first things first, before we even go into our bowl, I have got just over a pint of blood. This is fresh blood. I know there's a lot of places that use the, the powdered blood and rejuvenated with water, but this is actually the real deal. Is there a big difference? I think for authenticity, it's just nice to have the fresh product in front of me. To start off, we'll take the oats and we'll just tip them into the bowl, along with all our seasonings. So that was a tablespoon of salt, a third of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one and a half teaspoons of mixed herbs, a third of a teaspoon of nutmeg, and a good teaspoon of black pepper. We'll give it a good mix. I'll just set that aside, and we'll go on to our suet. Now the suet also I'm going to grate on the coarse side. So we'll take our grater in the bowl and just manageable chunks. We want to get this all through the grater. The occasional little chunk doesn't matter, just give us more of a visual when it comes to slicing the puddings. I remember when we were making it when I was younger. Obviously, Gran would have the, uh, the enamel bowls, like the ones in front of me here. I, rem I remember the big enamel bowl where it had the blue rim. And yes, there was a wee chip on the, on the side of the bowl. But Gran took great pleasure in looking after these bowls. And they were kind of special because they were the mixing bowls of the time before they became fashionable again, like the ones I've got in front of me here today. But you wanted to use for sort of a wee trip down memory lane. Another point to remember is uh, well with the uh, suet, make sure it's well chilled so it grates nicely. Out. There we 
we have the suet. It's nice and evenly grated. The occasional bigger piece in there. Not a great deal of worry. So two hours dry, we're going to tip in the suet. Expensive. So growing up and having the luxury of these items was a real treat. The smell of the oats and the onion, the seasoning. I know already it's starting to come together. Now for the blood. Just want to go a bit of time. And what we're after is a nice slack consistency which we'll be pouring into our pudding skins so what we'll do is I'll leave that now for 15 minutes just so the oats can absorb all that blood so we'll just come back in 15 minutes so now 15 minutes is up we can see now how it's nicely absorbed and come together now 10 minutes in I did add a wee bit more blood so it's more pouring consistency now when you come to doing this recipe by all means play about with consistencies and seasonings until you find your happy medium with it. So now to fill the puddings themselves. I purchased some paper skins from the butcher. They cost pennies, just ask for that to your local butcher. Failing that, you can actually bake the pudding itself in a square, a large square tray, bamboo style, just over a bath of water. I think it's more a, a traditional sort of butchery kind of kind of way but we've got the skins so we're going to fill them now when it comes to filling them we don't want to overfill okay uh, we're going to leave it a bit at the end we're going to leave it slightly slack as well but we're going to tie it very well with our butcher twine overload it and what will happen is it's going to expand as it will do anyway and burst what it gets in disaster Okay, so I'm just going to take my time now just to fill them. It does take two people, so the next time you see this, we will have full casings. So here we have our filled casings. The yield is four, a good wee number for the unexpensive ingredients we have used. After all, they do call it black gold. I don't have to explain what that means. The casings have been filled, but not overfilled. There's room for expansion and have been tied well, because the last thing we want is for them to burst. So we'll head over to the cooker and get them into our pan. So we're poaching the black puddings. I'm using the word poach because I don't want the water boiling. The rapidly boiling water is just going to affect the pudding cases and even probably burst them. So we want it just gentle simmering. The pan I've got here, time old fashioned black pudding pan. Uh, it's older than me. It's as old as the hills to be honest. Uh, we've had it for as long as I can remember. If you didn't have one of these pans, find the biggest pan you have, or if you've got a deep tray, you can poach them in the tray as well. So I'm going to pop these in one at a time, away from me. Absolutely quality. That's the 
four puddings. That's going to take an hour and 15 minutes. I'm going to pop a lid onto there and we'll come back in an hour and 15 minutes. So the hour and 15 minutes is now up. We're going to remove them from our pan very carefully. It's very hot. You can see the expansion in each pudding. Oh, we've got two joined together. And what happened is as well, they're obviously, once they've come out of the water, they'll have that sort of crinkled effect on them. And they'll just settle a wee bit more. I'm going to say just now that the room now is just full of this warm black pudding aroma. Again, it's pretty special and bring back so many memories. So what we'll do is, obviously, we're going to leave them to cool down completely. We'll get them to a safe level of cool and then we can store them in the fridge or freeze them. What you could do is you could slice them into portions and then freeze so it's there when you wanted it. Now there's something that's very much overlooked. So what I'll do is I'll take this back over to the water top and I'm just going to show you something very, very special. Now, like I said earlier, the house is filled with this warm black pudding aroma, which is very, very special and brings back so many memories when everyone was really involved in uh, the gathering of the ingredients to make the puddings. Now, what, one thing that's very overlooked, I know we talked earlier about if one of the puddings burst in the pan, it can end up just being a disaster. One thing that's very overlooked is when, when it comes to something like this, I know I've talked about people, food bringing people together. Now there's something special about what I'm about to do here. So after all this work and effort, what we want to do is we want to take this and I bet you a lot of people haven't had a black pudding that's freshly out of the pan. To present this in the middle of the table and just cut it open as is. that in the middle of the table and serve it with some fresh vegetables, potatoes if you want, even some crusty bread. It's pretty special. Everyone thinks maybe that uh, black pudding of the pans it's still raw. It's not. This is it cooked but in some ways it's maybe best to fry it on the frying pan. So we have it. Put that in the middle of the table as a way of taking people together and celebrating happy times. I'm just going to take a bit. Hmm. Absolutely stunning. That is my black pudding. Fresh out of the pan, cooling down for another day, but this one just stunning. Give it a while yourselves. Enjoy.